Hi, I'm Howard, and this is my first acrylic pour painting video. Today I'm going to show you how I do what I call a filled zone painting. So let me introduce you to my cast of characters, my colors. Uh, I have... That's me. Here's some colors. So I'm going to use... Prussian blue here to make a bunch of lines on the canvas and then I'm going to fill in the zones that get created with a whole bunch of blues and a whole bunch of greens going all the way up through a bright yellow green. And then I'm going to sweep over the top of them with purples through uh, light magenta. I've mixed some of these colors. This is 10 times, uh, it's a 10 to 1 ratio of iridescent white and um, uh, QC magenta. And here's a 10 to 1 iridescent white to ultramarine blue. That's what ultramarine blue looks like, and this is what it looks like with 10 parts to 1 of iridescent white. I've done that with a bunch of colors to get lighter versions. So now I'm going to lay down a background grid with Prussian blue. I'm using a 9 by 12 canvas here. One of the things I like about the filled zone technique is that it'll scale to any size canvas. So if you're making a really big painting, this is how I at least figure out how much paint to put on it. When all the zones are filled, there's enough paint on it. So it does not matter what shapes you make. You can draw words if you want. I'm looking for little zones that aren't too big and kind of close to the edge. That's probably fine right there. And then you just fill in colors. You, you could, for example, focus all the darker colors along one edge. I'll, I'll kind of do that. I try never to get the same color next to itself in two different zones. Can you see what's happening right here? What's happening is that the paint is, is slowly connecting with the border. That's what I want. And if there's not enough paint, it doesn't reach the border. And it doesn't really matter if it does this, but it does kind of a nice thing when it meets, meets the border. And uh, it happens automatically. You don't have to sit there and wait for each one. So I'm just going to add colors. and My goal is to cover the canvas. The colors are kind of similar. I try to keep them a little further apart. Colors are kind of similar. You can put more than one color into a cell, into a zone. It really doesn't matter. My goal is to get enough paint out there. Fun to make little rules and then break them because you can't really do it wrong. On the other hand, you can't really do it right, so you don't have a lot to lose. I have already worked my way through the collection of blues that I set aside. And I feel like I want some more interesting blues out here, a little more contrast. And now I think I'll switch to some greens, and I'm going to put the darkest greens over here.
paint is pretty thick right now. Um, I'm going to be doing a swipe, which means I'm going to be putting the contrasting colors all on one side and dragging them over on top of all these colors. So I'm expecting that I'll end up pushing some paint off the other side. What I don't want to do is have too little paint on there. If there's not enough paint, you'll end up with dry spots. And I mean, again, you can't do it wrong, you can't do it right, but I don't happen to like dry spots in my paintings. Um, and you can go back and try to amend them, but it's pretty hard. And you can tell the difference when someone has fixed a painting versus having enough paint on it the first time. Which is why figuring out how to get enough paint on there is really good. Uh, another nice advantage of the filled zone technique is that these paints are distributed around the canvas, but they are still their pure colors. You can see a little mixing happening right here, or layering. There's something nice happening here where these colors are sort of mixing towards each other. I'm going to add some more colors here. See, it's almost filled in now. Down to some of the lightest colors. Well, I guess that's not lighter. And then I have to decide what am I going to do about the outer edge. And what I will often do with the outer edge is put a single solid color out there and make sure all of that canvas out there is covered because if it's dry, that won't make me happy either. But it's really up to you what you like. And if I haven't said it already, I'll say it for sure now. You do not need to use this many colors. Uh, really, you could use any number of colors. And you will end up with a painting covered in paint and if you do interesting things to it, it'll be an interesting painting. And even if you don't do interesting things to it, it might be an interesting painting. It's one of the nice things about poor painting. Um, so now I just want to make sure I'm filling in some stuff and I'm going to try to pick some contrasting colors to whatever's around it. Let's see. And just little bits of color here and there. And as you, as you notice, the painting is now mostly covered in paint. And I could pick this up and pan it, which is tilting it in one direction to get this paint to cover the edge. But when you do that, it, it creates a certain pattern in the paint, and it begins to mix the paints together. And I don't want to do that yet. I want these paints to be more coherent until I do the swipe. That's just preference. just happens to be what I want to do. Um... So, let's see what I've got that I can do around the outside edge. I've got gold. Gold doesn't usually go with blues, but you never know. So I'm going to I'm going to fill in these with something kind of let's see, with something kind of uh, dark and mysterious here. And maybe something Oh, I don't know, like this here. This is a pretty big zone, so I'm going to fill it with a couple of different colors. Okay. And I feel like it's pretty well filled in. Now, even though there might be a cell or two missing, it doesn't really matter. So now I'm going to surround the outside with gold. And I want this gold to mate with the paint next to it and have enough paint to drip over the edge. It's a lot of gold.
You do not have to do the edges of your painting. I, I happen to like to. I think the edges are just another canvas to work on. They happen to be vertical and obviously poor painting is very different on a vertical edge. Doesn't mean you can't do something interesting and beautiful with it. And I like to. So I like to, I don't know if you can see or not. Let me, let me try to work from a different angle here. I use my finger to mate the paint to the end of the edge of the canvas to get it to wet and roll over the edge. And I'll pick up some paint off the, off the uh, Lazy Susan here to fill in any missing areas. But I'll, I'll often touch right at the edge to cause it to spill over. And I now's the time to do this. Because once you start swiping, it's going to be perhaps very hard to, to do the edges. Because they'll have bits of paint on them that you don't want to interfere with. It already looks beautiful. And then if the whole sides are not covered, you'll have a hard time finishing the sides without ruining what's already there. So, And it, once I get it to the edge, it will roll over, but if there's not quite enough paint, you'll get dry spots on the edges too, on this out here. So I'm mostly done with those. I like to use a Lazy Susan, and and uh, where there's color coming down, I try to use a different finger for each color to try not to mess up the combination of colors. Because I've already got some interesting things happening on the edges here. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me try this on this edge for you so you can sort of see it. Uh, don't worry about, it looks like I'm ruining it. Don't, don't worry about that because it is going to actually put paint over the edge of that. Because I'm going to do a swipe. And uh, before I do my swipe, I'm going to get rid of some bubbles. I do that with a little creme brulee burner. And you just kind of move quickly over the bubbles and they pop. I don't want to boil the paint. I don't want to ruin the consistency of the paint. I mean, you can, I don't know if it will catch on fire, right? anything will, but you want to stay a long way from that kind of temperature. Okay, so now all the little bubbles are popped. And now I'm going to work on the next phase, which is to swipe colors over it. And I'm going to, I'm going to put the lightest color magenta. I'm going to start that over here. And I'm putting way too much paint on if you were just going to leave it there. Put a line of that. And then let me move it around like this so you can see what I'm doing there. And then a, a line like this. My goal is to get a lot of paint over here. If I just left this like this, this paint would roll off. Let's see, let me do the dark. This is QC magenta with graphite. And then this is a Diox purple 10 to 1 with um, iridescent white. That's 10 parts iridescent white. And finally a bunch of... What is this? It's another purple. It's a uh, diox purple. It is the same purple. And then I will use this. This is a piece of a poster and um, I'm going to use it to sweep across, and that goes like this. I'm going to put it on there. Notice how it's nice and curved. 
that allows me to push along a wave of paint in front of it which is going to push off the other side and there we go and that's pretty good and I try not to drip this thing onto to anything so that's pretty neat I don't know how well you can see that but it's it's got all these interesting streaks in it. And so at this point, I mean, you could just leave it. And, and some people mix oil into their paints to cause uh, cells to form. I don't like to do that so much. I do a couple of different things to make cells in my paintings. I, I mix the paint without oil in it. And then I'll take a palette knife and I'll put a tiny amount of silicon oil on it. Just a tiny, tiny little bit like less than a drop just wetting the end and then wherever i touch like if i just barely touch the canvas again and again it will form cells and i can think about where i want to put them i can put them in a row like this um, i can just leave them alone and they'll get bigger and bigger cells tend to grow and when they grow, they bump into each other and then they stop growing. So when you put them close together, they end up being wide because they can still grow wide ways, but they can't grow tall ways anymore. So uh, if you want really big cells, you just want to make sure you put them far apart. And then they'll get big. And that's fun. And I do things like follow a specific color or pick a single color and go through the whole painting and everywhere that that color occurs I touch it and make cells and it makes it seem like that color is alive because cells look like life and that's fun and you can you can follow any kind of patterns you want um, another thing that I like to do is to take a toothbrush and some oil just like one drop of oil on the toothbrush like uh, let me try to do this I don't normally do this over my painting and you shouldn't either but I'm doing it so you can see it and then I will I will spray it onto the painting sometimes I will use a shield to protect part of the painting and that's what I'm going to do right now I've got this cookie sheet and I'm going to hold it vertically. I don't want to mess up the painting. Let me change your view slightly here to this side. And then I'm going to cover part of the painting and spray some of the rest of the painting right over here. And what this does is it creates tiny, tiny little cells. I think I'll do it over here too. You have to be really careful with spraying oil like this because it goes everywhere. I mean, it is really hard to control. If you're working on more than one painting or you're making paintings with other people and you spray oil, all the other paintings will have little sprays of oil on them. So it's definitely not something you want to allow to continue. Oh, and I seem to have dropped something in there. That's okay. Since uh, I've got a small thing there to reflect, I'm going to add another effect. So um, this is an air bag that whenever you order things, they, they ship it with these plastic bags. <clears throat> I save them and I use them when I paint. What you do is you push it onto the painting and then you lift it up and it sucks on the paint and makes an interesting effect like this. And you can do that in a couple of places, but I don't like to use the same, I don't want to put that paint back on. So I'm just going to do it like over here and then maybe over here. And it just makes interesting, an interesting result by picking up paint. And uh, I'm going to do one more of those. The 
picking up the paint and transporting it around in ways that you you don't really control but you see how it it creates these feathery effects around the outside those evolve over time I mean they look okay when you first start out but notice how the cells are evolving these are getting bigger and they're approaching each other they are going to completely squeeze the background away and they're going to touch each other probably because there's a lot of paint on there they have a lot of room to move and the oil spray cells here are starting to make really interesting lacy like spider webby connections the darker purple colors are going and and uh, uh, the magenta are going to fade away as those lines get thinner and the background colors the blues and the greens are going to stand out and then all around these little edges here where I've got this feathering these are going to develop as well so what I'm looking for at this point are parts of the painting that I might be concerned wouldn't necessarily evolve into something really pretty. I mean, the whole painting doesn't have to be filled with details. It's nice to have some areas in here that are a little bit less detailed. So I'm thinking this one might be just about done. I think I'm going to leave this one the way it is. And let me see if I can orient it correctly for you. Let me give you a... a different view. Uh, sorry, let me give you this view. And I guess that's sort of dark, but I think you can sort of see what's going on there. And that's the filled zone technique. Thanks for watching.